Good morning. It's really good to see all of you today. This is um, such an extraordinary opportunity. And I appreciate my Athletes in Action friends for inviting me to come and share. I want to start off with a little story this morning. So these are uh, about eight years ago. I had the chance to work with the Notre Dame women's basketball team. This was a team that had a lot of talent. Some of you who know the WNBA will see Skylar Diggins was on that was on that team but they had challenges with their communication and so what was happening was their communication challenges were keeping them from being as good as they could be on the basketball court Have any of you experienced that with your teams? Challenges with relationships that make it difficult to perform at your highest level on the court? This is one of my favorite quotes about communication. The single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. So sometimes we think we're communicating well, but the other person does not understand what we're trying to get across. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about something that can help you be a better communicator with your players. and really in all of your relationships. So this concept is called temperament. So today we are going to talk about what temperament is, why it's important, especially to you as coaches, Today we're going to give you a glimpse of your temperament. And then I'm going to give you some examples of how this concept of temperament has helped coaches and teams to perform better. So why learn about temperament? There are four reasons why I think this is important. Well, actually, let's back up. Let's define temperament first. Temperament is about somebody's nature. It's about why we do what we do. So all of us have a way of being, right? A way that you go through your day, a way that you make decisions, all of those kinds of things. And so temperament has something to do with why you do th those things the way that you do them. So I'm going to show you a few little few reasons why I think this is important and we'll start to understand a little bit more about this concept of temperament. How many of you have ever heard of the movie The Blind Side? Some of you? 
The Blind Side is about a young man who was homeless and was taken into a family that could help him. And as a result of that, he ended up with a chance to play football, American football. And because of his size, he was going to play a certain position on the football team called the offensive line. But he had never done this before. And he had no idea what he was doing. Maybe you can relate to that with if you coach youth sports, where young people have have never played before. So we're going to watch a movie, a clip of the movie that shows Michael, the young man, at practice one day. And he's trying to run the play, but he's doing it all wrong. And so the coach is kind of yelling at him. But it's not changing Michael's performance. And so the Michael's adopted mom is watching this happen on the field. And she, Sandra Bullock, <laughs> and she steps in, and this is what she does. This is her response. Uh. I don't know if they can hear it.
So what that shows, what that shows is that Mrs. Tui, the mom, knew things about Michael, knew things about Michael that the coach did not know. And because of those things, she was able to communicate in a way that he understood. So Michael had this thing called a protective instinct, where it came naturally to him to want to protect other people. And when she helped him understand his role on the football team as a protector of the quarterback and the running back, he then understood what he was supposed to do. So the way that relates to temperament is that when we understand our temperament and other people's temperament, it gives us clues to how to better communicate with them. The second reason why I think temperament is important has to do with this photo. A number of years ago, a newspaper in Washington, D.C. did an experiment. This man is named Joshua Bell. He is a world-famous violinist, musician. And they wanted to see what would happen when he stood in a subway station at rush hour and played his fiddle. What do we sometimes assume about musicians who are on the street corner or in a subway station? We make assumptions that maybe they are down and out, or maybe they are not very educated, or they're just looking to make a few dollars on the street corner. But this man is world famous, and that fiddle costs $3 million. So he stood in the metro station for 45 minutes, and 1,000 people walked by him. And only 27 stopped to listen to the music. And this lady was the only person who recognized him. And so I tell that story because temp in, as human beings, we make assumptions about other people, don't we? So if your player behaves in a certain way, you might make an assumption about why that behavior is happening. Yeah. 
understanding that player's temperament can help you reduce your assumptions or make more educated assumptions. Because you will understand more about human behavior when you understand about temperament. So the third reason why I think temperament is important I want you to do a little experiment at your seat. Would you sign your name on your piece of paper there? Just sign your name. Now sign your name with the opposite hand. What was that like the first time? Easy? The first time? The first time was easy? The first time was very easy. The second time was probably harder. It probably took you longer. It probably took more concentration. Right, you had to think more about it. That's a picture of temperament. When you learn about temperament, you learn about strengths and skills that come that come very naturally to you like signing your name some of the temperaments may not be as strong for you and showing those characteristics may feel like signing your name with your opposite hand. It's not that you can't show them, but it just takes longer and it takes more energy and focus for you. The last reason um, that I think temperament is important has to do with this photo. What do you see? Young lady? How many people see a young lady? How many see a young lady? Okay. Does anybody see anything else? An old lady. An old lady. Who sees an old lady? How many people see both the young lady and the old lady? A few people. Here's the young lady. Here's the young lady. This is her chin. She's facing this way. The young lady's nose, eyelash, hair. This is her necklace. 
Does that help? Here's the old lady. This is the old lady's chin. This is her lips. And this is the old lady's nose. And she's looking down like this. This is her eye, her nose, her fur coat, her hair. So I show that picture because communication is challenging because we can look at exactly the same thing but see something different. We can be looking at the same thing but see something different. We see different things. Our perception might be different. Your players, when you give them instruction, they can hear the same instruction, but one player can understand that and the other player doesn't understand that. Have you experienced that before? When you're, you're in a timeout and you give instruction to your team, and two of your players go out to the court and know exactly what they're supposed to do, and three of them have no idea what they're supposed to do. When it comes to communication styles, there is no right or wrong. There's no right or wrong. There's no good or bad. We are just different. And so when you learn about temperament, you learn about somebody's communication style. How they tend to communicate and how they receive communication. So one of the ways we can discover about temperament is using an assessment. The, the one that I like to use is called real colors. And it associates four different temperaments with different colors. So in real colors, we have green, gold, blue, and orange represent the temperaments. Yes. So this tool is based on a lot of theory that goes all the way back to Hippocrates. This, this tool has, is based on theory that goes all the way back to Hippocrates in 450 BC. Hippocrates.
Many people since Hippocrates have built on his theories and that's where this assessment comes from. So it is based on very good psychological theory. One thing about temperament is that we have all four temperaments in us all the time. So what makes you unique is how strong the different colors are for you. You probably have one or two of the temperaments that are stronger and one or two that are not as strong. So this particular assessment is three steps. Today I want to take you through just the first step to show you what it what it's like. So this is the first step. These are four different cards that represent the four different temperaments. Based on these pictures, I want you to select the card that best represents you. Based on the pictures. So you'll look at the four different cards and put them in order from the card that seems the most like you to the card that looks the least like you. I'll give you a few minutes to look at the pictures. Yes, from the most like you to the least like you. Just looking at the pictures, yes. And if you need to come closer, you can come closer. I'll come over here so you all can see. Green? Yeah. <laughs> She's really special in our team. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> There's not anything that she likes. She <laughs> doesn't like. Yeah. She looks so nice. She looks so nice. <laughs> It's, it's a, yes, telescope to see the stars and the moon and So 
So take take a minute or two and share with somebody next to you the card, the one card you said was most like you and why you chose that card. Just share with somebody the card that you said was most like you and why you chose that card. Which one do you think? Uh, I, I, I choose orange. Yeah. And I just came here to make sure. To check. Yeah, yeah. double check. I think it's orange. Okay. Yeah, yeah. good. Green. Okay. What about if I change? Oh, okay, no. All right. Does orange can go? Get along together with someone that choose green? Yeah. Okay. They can get along with each other. There's li there's different reasons why they might have tension uh -huh. with different colors. Um, but there's also things that they can appreciate about each other. Okay. So how many people how many people said their top card was blue? How many people chose blue? Okay, two hands. Okay. How about how many people said gold was your top top card? Gold. We got one? Okay, gold. How about green? Who said green was their top? Okay. And how many orange? We got some orange. Okay. <laughs> so one thing to remember is that all of us have all of these in us. But some colors are stronger than others. So I'll give you a little picture of the different colors for people who are very strong as a blue, for example. People that are very strong as a blue are very relational, very relational. One of their highest values is relationships. These are people who have a hard time saying no. They love to help other people. And sometimes they will put themselves on the back behind serving other people. They are very motivated by their teammates. When you ask, when you ask somebody who is blue why they play sports, They will tell you they play because of their teammates. Someone who is a strong blue does, does not like conflict. Does not like conflict, tension. And they will tend to avoid 
confrontation or conflict. On a team, your blue players are like glue because they help build strong relationships on the team. The greens. Let's go to green. Greens are highly intellectual. They love to think. They love to solve problems. They like to figure things out on their own. For a strong green, they highly value the right answer. They like to be right. They are very logical. They are not very outwardly emotional. They are not very emotional outwardly. They do, yes. They can be. Mm -hmm. Usually one color or maybe two colors can be stronger and one or two are, are not as strong. Good question. Greens do not like to express their emotions. or talk about their feelings. Um, they are very motivated by problem solving. Your players who are green will want to know why they are doing certain drills. And they will ask you a lot of questions. All right, gold. The highest value for gold is organization. Organization is their highest value. Golds like structure. <laughs> Golds usually operate from a to-do list of things they need to do. Your gold players will like to know what they're going to do in practice. <laughs> Gold players like to have goals that they are trying to reach. And they are very motivated by achievement. They love to achieve their goals. They love to check things off of their to-do list. And gold players are very good at bringing others along to, the, to, the, to, to achieve the team goals.
All right, orange. Oranges are highly competitive. That does not that does not mean that the other colors are not competitive. It only means that competition is the driving force for an orange. Oranges hate to lose. <laughs> they are spontaneous. They like to take risks. They like adventure, like rock climbing and jumping out of airplanes. <laughs> An orange usually has, an orange will achieve the goal. <laughs> but they will go about it differently than the other colors. They will go about achieving a goal differently than the other colors. Someone who is gold wants to go straight to the goal. <laughs> and find the most effective way to get to the goal. <coughs> but an orange may take a different path to the goal. Neither, neither one is right or wrong. They're just different. So remember that this type of exercise is not meant to label people or put people in a little box. It's just meant as a way to understand human behavior. In order to communicate with pe better with people who are different than we are. So I have a video of a team that I did real colors with. And the coach is talking about a player who is orange. So I want you to see what it looks like to be orange. She's spontaneous. She brings energy. So each color has those kinds of strengths to bring to your team. And one of the important things to remember is that you need each color You need each temperament yeah, 
in order to build a successful team. So one of the coaches I used to work for was very strong green, very high green. And she believed in building a team using this principle of temperament. When I started working with them, the coaches were all green and gold. And the players were almost all orange and blue. So there was a lot of tension and misunderstanding. The coach could not understand why the blue players sometimes cried in practice. <laughs> But understanding temperament and understanding what it meant to be blue helped her to have more patience. And to communicate with them in a different way. I had another coach who told me that one of her players constantly asked her questions in practice. And it drove her crazy. Because she felt like those questions were questioning her ability as a coach. What color do you think that player was? That player was green. And when the coach did real colors with her team and understood that this player was green and that she was asking questions because she wanted more information. Not because she didn't believe the coach knew what she was doing. It brought a new understanding to their relationship. And it helped her be a better coach to that player. I had another coach who was recruiting a player. And the coach was trying to help the player make a decision about where they were going to come to college or university. And the coach kept asking the player to make a list of pros and cons about their university. And the coach kept getting frustrated that the player would not make the decision this way. They wouldn't make this list. But the coach was very high gold. And that's the way golds make decisions. 
with lists. But the player was not gold. And so that was not a helpful strategy for that player to make a decision. So when I worked with the Notre Dame basketball team and they did real colors, it helped them understand each other in a way that made them better on the basketball court. Two of their best players were both orange. But they would always have tension on the court. But when they understood that they were more alike than different, it helped them be better teammates to each other. So I hope that this gives you a picture of how important it is to understand your own communication style your own communication style as well as the communication style of your players and how temperament can help you to do that. Thank you so much for participating, for listening. I hope this was helpful. Yes, thank you so much.